We have completely emptied up Earth resources. Why do we keep on doing this? Come on humans, we can do better. Anyway, in this game it's too late. And now you need to set up a transport company and transport resources back from outer space. Because Earth is empty. You will do this by building up your transport company, send out your ship to the different trade lanes and get resources back. The player with the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. This is a 3 to 4 player game and it's 1 hour of gameplay per player. The game I have here in front of me is a prototype. It's a well made prototype, but it is still a prototype so some things might change from this video until you get it. But in this video I am going to show you how to set up this game and how to play it. So let's just take a look at this. This here is the setup of the main board. In the middle you have some different cards. The first one is the demand cards. Second one is the event cards. Then we have the keep cards and lastly global events. All of these four piles should be shuffled separately and placed on their corresponding space. I will tell you more about these cards in a bit. Above the cards we have the demand track. This track up here will adjust the demands of the different goods on earth. On these tracks we have some numbers that have circles around them. Each cube should be placed on these circles and this is the starting spot. These three here does not have any circles, meaning that they start at zero. Then we put one black cube on the population track, starting at number one. We put one white cube on the round tracker, also on number one. Here we place four gold tokens. Again I will tell you more about this in a bit. Around the board we have the stock track here and the income track here. The player should place their player token in their corresponding color on number two on the income track and number six on the stock track. Next to the board we got all the credits. The players start by choosing a player color. In this case here we have the player color red. They take two ships, two trade lane tokens, one stock token and one credit token. We also take one secret mission. This is a mission that only you get to find out what it says and should be kept secret from the other players. If you manage to complete this mission at the end of the game, you will get some victory points. We take a total amount of 20 credits. We take three event cards. And you can see that these are event cards by looking at the explanation mark at the top of the cards. You also need to take one keep card. And you can see that this is a keep card by seeing that there is a K at the top of the card. Next we need to set up the planets. Now this is a three player game, meaning that at the start of the game there will only be three planets. The terrestrial planet should always be a part of the game. But if this would have been a four player game for example, there would have been one more planet here. This one here for example. Once we have three planets with the terrestrial planet, each player at random picks one of these planets and place them out next to the main board. Now we need to fill each planet with resources in the warehouse. And as you can see each planet have their own demand track. And depending on where the resources start on the demand track we need to fill up the resources with that amount of resources. If we take the terrestrial planet here for example we can see that the food resource starts at 3. Meaning that we should put 3 food in the storage department. But this planet down here have a food that starts with 2. So this planet will only get 2 food resources in their warehouse at the start of the game. When each player have placed out their planet and the food resources they also get to place out one of their trade route tokens 
on the planet that they picked. When every player have placed out their first trade route token on a trade route on the planet that they picked, we get to place out the second one as well. But now we start with the last player and going counterclockwise, placing out the tokens. And you cannot place your token on the same planet, unless you do not have another choice. In this case here, the blue player was the last player, meaning that they now get to place out their token first. Then we go one step in counterclockwise order to the yellow player, and now they get to place out their second token. Lastly, the first player, the red player, gets to place out their token. But as you can see, they have no other choice than placing it out on their planet again. The last thing we need to do before start to play is to set up some demand cards and global events. This is done by the first player. We need to draw three demand cards. The demand cards are cards that will affect the demand track in different ways. This one here for example will increase the food demand by one. We will take this card and place it face up in the ongoing demand spot. And then we increase food by one. On the next card we can see that we should increase the consumer commodity by two. Again we take the card and place it face up and then we increase the consumed commodity by two. Bringing it up to three. And lastly we have the last card which is chemicals. Here we can see that this one will decrease chemicals by one. In this case here, chemicals are already at the lowest point, which means that we cannot lower them anymore. And lastly, we need to draw a global event card. These are events that will affect the gameplay in different ways. These cards are placed faced up in the ongoing world spot on the board, so all players can see what is going on. And now we're ready to start playing the game. So this game is about you getting goods from the different planets, getting it home to Earth and hopefully get a good profit from them. You will get this by sending out your little ships to the different trade lines that you own and then get resources back to Earth. And during a player's turn they can do a lot of things, mainly by using these cards from their hands. And as I told you before there's two different types of cards here. You have the event cards and to keep cards. The event cards are cards that are played from your hand and then discarded. The keep cards are cards that are played in front of you that stays there throughout the games and will of course give you different benefits throughout the game. At the end of the game the player that has the most victory points will win the game and you will get victory points from the credits, from the different resources that you have in front of you but also in many other ways. And of course I'm gonna tell you more about this in a bit. But first let's take a look at a player's turn. Each round in this game consists of 10 different phases. But during the first round we do not do the first two phases because well we have already done them in the setup. The first phase would be that the first player takes three demand cards and place them out on the demand space and then moves the cubes according to those demand cards. But like I said we have already done this during setups, so during the first round you would not do it. But you would do it in the upcoming rounds in the future. The same thing goes for the second phase. It is not done during the first round, because we have already done it. But in the upcoming rounds we would need to do this step, because this is where we place out our little tokens on the different trade routes. This would be done by the first player placing out their token on a trade route that they would like to trade on. Going to the player on the left that then places out their first trade token on a trade track. This is the way we go around the table until every player have placed out their first trade token. To place out their second token we would start with the last player and going counterclockwise around the table. And this is the way we would go back and forward placing out our trade tokens on the different trade tracks. 
Once every player have placed out all of their trade tokens, we go into phase number 3. In phase number 3, this game gets quite interesting, because here the players get to choose. Again, starting with the first player and then going clockwise around the table, the players get some choices, because we can choose to either draw 4 event cards, or 2 event cards and 1 keep card, or 2 keep cards. Now, these cards have different abilities and will affect your gameplay quite a lot. Remember I told you that the event cards are played and then discarded. But the keep cards are effects that will last throughout the game and will be placed in front of you. So here, the players actually have quite a hard choice. Once the player have done their choice, the turn goes on to the player on the left. When every player have picked their cards, we go into phase number 4. Phase 4 is the biggest phase of this game, and here you can do a lot of different actions. You can pay to play keep cards, event cards, you can buy ship, farms, trading lanes, and so on. But let's start at looking at the cards. So here we have an event card, and here we have a keep card. Remember you can see the difference in the top. Event cards having an explanation mark and the keep card having a K. But you can also see a number in the top left corner. This is the amount you would need to pay to be able to play these cards. Again the event card is played and then discarded. But the keep card is placed in front of you. And has an ability that will last throughout the game. The event cards have an effect that will activate immediately, but then they are used. Up here we can see some more information. This symbol here means that this is an attack card. And below it you can see where it says hackers, meaning that this here is a hacker attack. The good thing is that you can protect yourself against hacker attacks. If you have a card with the shield, that is a protection card but it needs to have the same title as the card that attacked you, otherwise it will not have effect. This means that if you for example are attacked in space, well the hackers won't do you that much good, right? Because they're down on earth protecting you from cyber attacks. This one attacks you up in space and needs to be protected in space. On this one we can also see one more symbol. This here is an upkeep symbol, because it will cost you to have privateers up in space. Some of your keep cards will also give you victory points at the end of the game. Meaning that if you use this invention here for example, you will get two victory points. But some of the keep cards actually have a special ability more. They have this token here that corresponds with the card. But these tokens are placed out on the different planets, and will have different effects. The heavy load here, for example, will let you carry two resources instead of one on your ship. Meaning that now, instead of just bringing back one resource, this ship can bring back two. The robotic workforce will bring up the production on the planet where the token is placed. Meaning that from now on, this planet will produce two extra resources in the production phase. So here for example, it will produce two extra food and two extra vegetables in each production phase. Whoever managed to build the metropolis will be able to place out the metropolis token on a planet and get six more income. And whenever you reach this symbol here, you are able to draw one more event card in phase 3. The meteor rain, however, is placed on a planet. And this token blocks income from the planet's trade routes during this turn. But if you have the rogue frighter, you are able to trade with all the planets. And can completely ignore the trade routes. Meaning that during your trade phase, you can place the rogue fighter on any planet you would like to trade with. And simply get the resources from that planet instead. If you manage to get the spaceport and place out your little spaceport on a planet, you will get 
credits each time freighters are placed here. If you have monopoly on a planet, you are the only one that are able to trade on that planet. And you are able to open up two trade routes on that planet instead of just one. So during phase four, you can play cards from your hand, but you may not buy any event cards with the attack value or activate any keep cards with the attack values on in phase number four, because phase number four is the buy and sell phase. If you want to attack your enemies, well, you will have to wait to phase number six. And that's the way you play cards from your hand. You simply play the amount stated in the top left corner. If it's an event card, you simply do the effect and then you discard the card. If it is a keep card, well, you play that card from your hand and you place it in front of you. And this effect will last throughout the game. But besides playing cards from your hand, you can also buy many many things. And to know what to pay for these different items that you would like to buy, we need to follow the reference sheet. Now again, this is a prototype, so the reference sheet will probably look a little bit different in the future, but you get the idea, right? On this reference sheet, you can see what the trade routes, what the ships, what the different buildings will cost you and also how much of it you can have depending on how many planets there are out on the table. So if you, for example, would like to buy one more ship, we would need to look at this reference sheet to see that it will cost us six credits. And with three planets out on the board and through trading routes, we can have a maximum of six ships. If we have the money and we have the requirements that is needed, we can pay those money and place this ship in our pool. The same thing goes for trading routes, because we can get more of these if the restrictions are within the limits. Then we would again pay the amount needed to get this trading route and place it in front of us and not on the board just yet. If we have the money needed, we could also pay to go out and explore. This would give us this explore token, but it would also let us draw a planet at random to bring to the table and put it in next to the other planets. All of a sudden we have more trade routes and also more resources. If we place a new planet, we also need to place out the cubes on the demand board of that planet and put some resources in the warehouse according to the demand on that planet. In this game, we have four different structures. We have resource facilities, industries, farms, and settlements. And you can buy these and place them out on one of the available spots on the planets. But you can only have one of these on each planet. Meaning that if you build a mine here, well, then you cannot have more mines on this planet. All of these structures can be upgraded giving you more income, more resources, but there will also increase the population. Bigger cities, well, more people. So you can upgrade your buildings, but this cannot be done during the same turn as you have built them. Whenever you build a structure out on a planet, you need to put one of your control tokens on that structure to show that you own this building. Up here, we can see one more space. This is a moon connected to this planet, but this is not used in this version I have here, as this is an expansion. The first player to build four farms will get the farm gold token. The first player to build three resource facilities will get the resource facility gold token. The first player to build two factories will get the gold factory token. And the first player to build two cities will get the city gold token. Each of these tokens are worth 5 victory points at the end of the game. During this phase, you also have the possibility to mess around with the stock market a little bit. Because you can pay 7 credits to increase your stock by 1. But also your income by 1. When your income token passes this symbol here, your stock value increases by 1. But if your income becomes below 10 again, your stock value will also go down. 
Besides buying, selling and messing with the stock market, you can also sell cards from your hand. For each card that you sell, you will receive two credits. If you ever get more than eight cards on your hand, you should instantly discard cards down to eight cards again. But of course you will get two credits for each card you discard. So it's not that bad. So that was phase number four. And like I said, this is the biggest phase in this game because there is a lot going on in phase number four. You can buy cards, you can activate keep cards, not with attacks though, remember, because that is phase number six and not four. But you can buy buildings, you can upgrade buildings, more of these little trade routes, markers here, explore new planets. There are so much things for you to do in phase number four. And like I said, you can do these actions in any order you would like to. So you could first explore a planet and then you could buy a spaceport and put it out. And then you could maybe play an event and so on. There are a bunch of things for players to do in phase number four. It's just absolutely awesome. But once we have done phase number four, we move into phase number five. In phase number five, this is where we get to place out our little ships on our trade routes. Starting with the starting player and then going in clockwise order around the table. So the starting player would start by placing out all of their ships on their trade routes. Once you have placed your little ship here below your trading route, you also get to take one resource. That was phase number five. Quite simple, right? We go around the table and we place out our ships on our trading lanes. Now, you can place more than one ship on one lane. So if you want to place two ships on one of your trading lanes, well, that is fine. It's all up to you. Once we have placed out our ships and loaded them with resources, we go into step number six. And this is where things might get a little bit messy. Because this is where we get to activate any keep cards or event cards on our hand that has the attack symbol. We start again with the starting player to see if this person wants to attack anyone around the table or any planet out on the board. If the player is targeting another player, well that player will have a chance to defend themselves using an a defend card, remember? But it needs to have the same subgroups, otherwise they cannot defend themselves. If we are attacking several players, the player to the left of the attacker needs to decide if they want to defend or not, because they do not have to. Once they have decided, the turn goes on to the next attacked player. Again, they get to choose if they want to defend or not. If your opponent chooses not to defend themselves, or maybe they cannot defend themselves, well then, they will be hit with whatever the text says. In this case here, you get to change one fighter from the player and replace it with one of your own unused fighters. To be able to actually use your card and attack, well, you need to pay whatever value the card has up in the top left corner. And the same thing if you want to defend yourself. You need to be able to pay the amount the card costs to actually be able to defend yourself. But as a defender, you can actually discard cards right away to get the credits that you might need to be able to defend yourself. That was the attack phase number six. Now we move into a short little cleanup phase in phase number seven. We need to take back all our little trading routes markers here out on the board, but also all of our ships that has any resources on them. And now we also need to calculate our income. We would do this by first taking the cubes that we have on our little ships. In this case, one vegetation and one iron. Now we need to see the value of these on the demand market. And we can see that the value for vegetables is 3 and for iron is 2. Meaning that our 1 iron is worth 2 and our 1 vegetable is worth 3. But we would also need to look at our income, which in this case here is 15. So let's do the math. 
We have two resource cubes here with a total value of 5. We have an income that is 15, meaning that we would get 20 credits from the bank. Ka-ching! Once we have cashed in the money, we go into phase number 8. In phase number 8, we need to calculate all the food cubes that we have brought back to planet Earth. When we know how much food we have brought back to planet Earth, we need to move the population track by that number. When this hits the end of the track, it resets back to number 1 again. And then we need to increase all of the demands by 1. In phase number 9, we simply remove the little resource cubes from our ships. We also need to remove any cubes from the warehouses out on the planets. And then we need to reset the new resource value on the different warehouses. If you have any keep cards in front of you that can keep resources, well, now is the time to refill them as well. In phase 10, we simply move the round tracker up one step and we are ready to go again. And that's the way the game goes on. We will proceed through the 10 different phases of the game. And then we will go 8 rounds. Once we have done round number 8, we need to calculate some scores to see who have won this game. First we need to take our stock value, in this case 29, which will give us 29 victory points. Then we get one victory point for every 10 credits that we have. For every cube that we have on our transport ships, we will get half a victory point, meaning that this here would give us one victory point. If we have managed to get any of the gold tokens, we would get five victory points per token. For every building you own out on the map, you will also get scores. But here you need to check the reference sheet to see how much you get per building. And there will be a difference if it is upgraded or not. If you have any keep cards with victory points on them, those would also be counted in now. If you have managed to get an explore token, that explore token will be worth two victory points. And if you have the most explore tokens around the table, you will get another five victory points. And lastly, we have any victory points that you would get from your secret mission. When we have calculated the scores, well then we have a glorious winner of this game. We have the standing best CEO of the different planets and hopefully we can manage to make Earth just a little bit better in the future. So is this game hard to learn? No, no it's not. It's quite easy to learn how to play the game. But to master it, that will take you some time because there is a lot of things going on out on the board. You need to keep a track on what you are doing, what your opponents are doing, the demand tracks, the shipping routes, the planets, the buildings, your ships and so on. There are a lot of things for the players to keep a track on in this game and you will probably have to change your plans along the way. Meaning that if you start with a plan that you think is gonna work all the way to victory, well, you are probably wrong because there's a lot of things that the other players will do to interfere with your plan. They might take out your ships, they might destroy your cards, they may force you to discard cards from your hand just to be able to protect yourself. All of a sudden you find yourself picking up more keep cards than event cards because now your strategy is just not what you thought it was from the beginning. But that's also what makes this game a lot of fun and gives it a lot of replayability. As I said at the start of the game, this is a prototype so some things might change, but from the look of it now, I think it looks brilliant. I really like the artwork here and I like that it's not too sci-fi. I mean, this is sci-fi, we're in the future and we are going out in space getting resources from other planets, but it is believable sci-fi. There's no aliens here, there's no extreme sci-fi that just gets out of hand. This is all really believable and it might be a future that we're facing. There you go, my friend, that was Planet Trade for you. 
This is an absolutely epic game. It is a long game. I mean, we're talking 45 minutes an hour per player. So if you're not into long games, well, then this is probably not for you. But if you are into strategic long games where you sit down and try to take out your opponent plans and still start to keep on building up your own plans and strategies, this is for you. There is so much things going out on the board with the trading tracks, with the events, with the different global events that just obstructs the whole gameplay for you and really just put everything you thought upside down. This is a cool, cool game. It will be out on Kickstarter in May, so check that out if you want to. There will be links down in the description to the Board Game Geek site, the Kickstarter, everything you want to know. And if you like what I'm doing here, my friend, give me a thumbs up, a comment, whatever you would like to do. But most importantly, keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out.